cardinal met the body, the, the ex-president, at the door. He blesses the remains with holy water. That Catholics might be reminded of their baptism as their entrance into the church. The solemn procession moves up the aisle of the church. procession being led by the cross reminds us that it was through the cross of Jesus that death was defeated. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and we follow in his footsteps. The celebrant, as he processed up the aisle, recited Psalm 129. The psalm sings of our complete helplessness and dependence upon God. It concludes on a confident note that, with the Lord there is mercy, and with him plenteous redemption. The celibate now removes the cape or cope and puts on the proper vestments for the celebration of Mass. John Fitzgerald Kennedy holds title to a special place in our hearts and in our prayers. Thus many have gathered here in final testimony and tribute. <laughs>
the cardinal ascends the altar and will now recite the first hymn or chant of the mass. The entrance song for funeral mass pleads for eternal rest for the dead and reminds us that all that is flesh and blood must come before the throne of God. After greeting all present, the Cardinal invites them all to pray. We pray that John Fitzgerald Kennedy may be spared all punishment and taken into paradise. sacred scripture is taken from the letter of the apostle Paul to the Thessalonians. Make no haste, brethren, about those who have gone through their rest. You are not to lament over them, as the rest of the world does, with no hope to live by. We believe, after all, that Jesus underwent death and rose again. Just so, when Jesus comes back, God will bring back those who have rested through him. The solemn reading of the Bible is followed by a lesson which serves as an additional food for thought. The first of these, for example, certainly reminds us of President Kennedy. The just man shall always be remembered. He shall feel, fear no evil reports. The celebrant is reading a 13th century hymn, the Dies Irae. This hymn is a Christian meditation on the day of death. A non-Catholic has described this magnificent hymn as solitary in its excellence 
The secret of his irresistible power lies in the awful grandeur of the theme. The intense earnestness and pathos of a poet, the simple majesty and the solemn music of its language, the stately meter, the triple rhythm, all combine to produce an overwhelming effect as if we heard the final crash of the universe, the commotion of the openings of graves, the trumpet of the archangel summoning the living and the dead. And so the king of tremendous majesty, seated on the throne of justice and mercy, and ready to dispense everlasting life or everlasting woe. Or took like that a king is for concrete and quasi king is there a poor may be. A cremosa de Isla, or a very good extravina, you look on the Zomo Rail. O a big of our cities, the age is on the night, on the age, break me in, amen. Now comes the most important reading of the Mass, the proclamation of the Holy Gospel. The Cardinal prays that he may be worthy to perform this sacred task. All stand to demonstrate this respect for the Word of God. <laughs> No temperate exit moderation, domine, see for which is a crop, the mayor's gone for which is model, I said, I don't see how we are going to At that time, Martha said to Jesus, If thou hast been here, my brother would not have died. And I know well that even now God will grant you whatever thou asks of him. Thy brother, Jesus said to her, will rise again. Martha said to him, I know well enough that he will rise again at the resurrection when the last day comes. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection in life. He who believes in me, although he be dead, will live on. And whosoever has life and has faith in me to all eternity cannot die. Dost thou believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that thou art Christ, thou art the Son of the living God. The first part of the Mass having been completed, we now begin the offertory, the preparation of the gifts. Sullivan has presented the bread, which is to be consecrated in just a few moments. Here the wine is presented on behalf of all who have gathered themselves in this work of worship.
Sullivan prays over our gifts and reminds us that as often as this memorial of Christ's sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is carried on. As we offer our fruits and the praise to God, we pray to God for John Fitzgerald Kennedy, the servant of God, that he may be given everlasting rest. In a moment, the Cardinal will invite all to join with the angels in unceasing prayer before the throne of God. Thus begins the canon, the central prayer of thanksgiving, through which Christ renews his work of redemption in our midst. <laughs> And famous great be famous for clays who was signed to get all the compass of a guy could the dear out and die rain it all to war to harm. On a gong famala to a pump on us the power or manding. In the first part of the canon, the priest again asks God the Father to accept the sacrifice. Then he prays for the whole church. Next he prays for the faithful on earth, mentioning by name those for whom the Mass is being offered, and including in a special way those who are actually present. Spreading his hands over the offerings, he prays, We therefore beg you to accept, O Lord, this offering of our worship and that of the whole household. Taking the bread into his hands, he recites the solemn words which Christ used at the Last Supper. This is my body.
Now blessing the chalice, he recites the words of Christ himself as he consecrates the wine. For this is the chalice of my blood of the new and eternal covenant, the mystery of faith which shall be shed for you and for many unto the forgiveness of sins. The prayers after the consecration call to mind the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord. Now the Cardinal prays for the faithful departed that they may have comfort and peace, naming in particular in this Mass our late beloved President, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Through Christ and with him, and in him is given to you, God the Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory forever and ever. But an Ostak, we as in jail, is signed to be jail in Norman Tomb, and many a Renyon Tomb. We have a long dog's door, a secret in jail, a white and tell on. And an Ostak, and quoted the yarn down of a Surya, at the middle of a step of an Ostak, they get at most the minimum of a door of a snostrit, at the nose in two cars, in ten tots the own now. Still, you better know the smell of I'm in the middle of the space with Dominic, one of the smallest by two, the space on the possessor tour. I said, and this is any article of the Oath of Saint Vision, the agent reached him every year. Come beyond us, a pause, who would pay their father. With this element, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen.
We come here on the apartment street to sign the people right now. Say, say, go on, say, go on, man. Get the law, but we don't know what it is. But they continue to sue my rape and move them on me. We'll be in it to make fun of the rock and all that. We'll be up here, darling, both the media out for the mental. And my name will be with you, man. We'll be with you right now. We'll be up here, darling, 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 Arnum Celeste and Archibion at the Norman Dominating in the Dom. Domine non sum dignus. Then press the date to man, the town of the club of what's the love of the man. Domine non sum dignus. Then press the date to man, the town of the club of what's the love of the man. Domine non sum dignus. Then press the date to man. The celebrant now receives the communion. The Holy Eucharist is a living symbol of union, the union of all the faithful of Christ, living and dead. The Holy Eucharist is the daily bread that Christians everywhere devoutly pray for. For the Catholic, the sacramental body of Christ received in the Eucharist is the Christ whom those who die in the Lord will meet in heaven. It is this mystery, together with others, that enables the Christian to utter the prayer contained in the preface of this Requiem Mass. For those who are faithful to you, Lord, life is not taken away, it is transformed. When this earthly abode is no more, an everlasting dwelling place awaits them in heaven. fully take part in the holy sacrifice and to do what our Lord wants, the congregation receives the sacramental body of Christ from the hands of the priest.
response to the message of God's love, the liturgy takes the form of an act of thanksgiving, or Eucharist. This word, which is used only in connection with religion, may surprise those to whom it has never been explained. The ordinary word thanksgiving is no substitute for the work of the Eucharist. When we have thanked our human benefactors, we often feel we have discharged our obligation to them. But with God, the position is quite different. It is indeed fitting and right, our duty, our salvation always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. At the Missal, the priest recites the communion anthem. This short verse is all that remains of a much longer chant of past ages. Cardinal greets the people and then invites us all to pray. Almighty God, may this sacrifice cleanse from sin the soul of your servant, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, who is gone from this world. And so may he receive forgiveness and everlasting rest from you.
The mass itself has been completed. Cardinal Cushing now moves to remove the principal mass vestments, the chasuble. Cardinal now seated on a throne. <coughs> the congregation seats. The Most Reverend Philip M. Hannon, Auxiliary Bishop of Washington, D.C., having paid his reverence to the prelates, major clergy, now ascends the pulpit. Mrs. Kennedy and children, beloved mother and members of the family, the President of the United States, your majesties and distinguished heads of government, representatives of distinguished heads of state, your eminence, Cardinal Cushing, your excellency, the Most Reverend Representative of the Holy Father, Your Excellency, the Archbishop and Bishops, Monsignor Cartwright, Your Excellencies, the Ambassadors, the Speaker of the House, distinguished members of the Judiciary, the Congress, the Government, and distinguished friends all of President John Fitzgerald Kennedy. It was thought that the most appropriate commemoration of this heartbreaking event would be the expression of President John Fitzgerald Kennedy's ideals and sources of inspiration in his own words. President John Kennedy was fond of quoting the Holy Bible. In the last dinner of his life in Houston, Texas, last Thursday night, he applied to a friend, as it should be applied to him, this combination of passages from the Proverbs and the prophecy of Joel. 
Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And where there is no vision, the people perish. And to those who shared his vision in this land and abroad, he had said two months ago to the United Nations, let us complete what we have started. For as the scriptures tell us, no man who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. At this time of sorrow and burden, he would have us remember the passages from Joshua and Isaiah he had used in accepting the presidential nomination. Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Finally, in his last hours, President Kennedy had prepared these words for Dallas and for the nation. The righteousness of our cause must always underlie our strength. For as was written long ago, except the Lord guard the city, the guard watches in vain. The following is one of his favorite passages from Scripture, from the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. There is an appointed time for everything and a time for every affair under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. And now is the final expression of his ideals and his aspirations, his inaugural address. We observe today not a victory of party, but a celebration of freedom, symbolizing an end as well as a beginning, signifying renewal as well as change. Let the word go forth from this time and place to friends and foe alike that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans born in this century, tempered by war, disciplined by a hard and bitter peace, proud of our ancient heritage, and unwilling to witness or permit the slow undoing of those human rights to which this nation has always been committed and to which we are committed today at home and around the world. Let every nation know, whether it wishes us well or ill, that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty. 
Let both sides unite to heed in all corners of the earth the command of Isaiah to undo the heavy burdens and let the oppressed go free. All this will not be finished in the first 100 days, nor will it be finished in the first 1,000 days, nor in the life of this administration, nor even perhaps in our lifetime on this planet. But let us begin. In your hands, my fellow citizens, more than mine, will rest the final success or failure of our course. Since this country was founded, each generation of Americans has been summoned to give testimony to its national loyalty. The graves of young Americans who answered the call to service surround the globe. Now the trumpet summons us again, not as a call to bear arms, though arms we need, not as a call to battle, though embattled we are, but a call to bear the burden of a long twilight struggle year in and year out, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, a struggle against the common enemies of man, tyranny, poverty, disease, and war itself. In the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. I do not shrink from this responsibility. I welcome it. I do not believe that any of us would exchange places with any other people or any other generation. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it, and the glow from that fire can truly light the world. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. With a good conscience, our only sure reward, with history the final judge of our deeds, let us go forth to lead the land we love asking his blessing and his help, but knowing that here on earth, God's work must truly be our own. Bishop Hannon has just read favorite selections of President Kennedy taken from the Holy Scripture and from some of his major addresses as requested especially by Mrs. Jacqueline Kennedy. Cardinal Cushing, having reverenced the altar, now moves to the beer. A wonderful prayer in its simplicity and confidence is the following. The departed has indeed been a sinner because he was human, but he was sealed with the seal of the Holy Trinity in baptism. 
He believed in the triune God, and therefore the Church confidently hopes for mercy from the same all-loving God. The gratia tua ili secarente, mere attare madre ritimol seones, we don't be but in signitas as signacula sante trinitatis, we vive as a regna sin secula seculo. Libra me domine de morte eterna in die ila tremenda, quando cele momenti sunetera. No vain of a shooter car, I say, Colon Perigna. Fame and spark the Sumago, a teammate. Deliver me, O Lord, from everlasting death on that dread day of terror when the heavens and the earth will be shaken, as thou dost come to judge the world by fire. I am in fear and trembling at thy judgment and the wrath that is to come when the heavens and the earth shall be shaken. That day will be a day of wrath and of misery and of ruin, a day of grandeur and of horror, as thou dost come to judge the world by fire. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let thy perpetual light shine upon him. <laughs> Pausing now, the cardinal places incense over hot coals in a censer. This action is filled with biblical symbolism. The smoke rising to heaven indicative of our prayers of supplication. While the Cardinal recites the Our Father with the people, he goes around the bier and sprinkles the corpse with holy water thrice on each side. Then in the same way he incenses it. Holy water and incense becoming efficacious sacramentals through the prayer and the blessings of the Church. They are employed here because the soul of the departed benefits by their application and because the body of the departed was a temple of the Most Holy Spirit. And I know a porta inferi, requies God in pace, domine exaudi orationa mea, dominus vobis, aremes tescui proprimes miserere semper et pace, e suplices exeram, Oanama family tui Ioannis, from Odiae de Oxygeno Migrata Assisti. The Cardinal now says, From the gates of hell, rescue his soul, O Lord. May he rest in peace. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come unto thee. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Let us pray. O God, who alone art ever merciful and sparing of punishment, 
Humbly we pray thee on behalf of the soul of thy servant, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, whom thou hast commanded to go forth today from this world. Do not hand him over to the power of the enemy, nor forget him forever, but command that his soul be taken up by thy holy angels and brought home to paradise. May his soul and all the souls of the faithful departed to the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Hey, the angels, the Jack leads you into power. May the martyrs receive you at your coming. May uh, the Spirit of God embrace you. And mayest thou, with all those who made the supreme sacrifice of dying for others, uh, receive eternal rest and peace. Amen. Cardinal has now returned to the throne, and there he changes the mass vestments in preparation to leading the corpse from the church. May the angels take you to, into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you on your way and lead you into the holy city of Jerusalem. is the summit of Christian life, the source of its power, for in it Christ gathers up his brothers and presents them to the Father as one with him, thus offering all honor and glory forever and ever. This Mass has been offered for John Fitzgerald Kennedy, the 35th President of the United States. May he rest in peace.
As the body of our late president is taken now to the cemetery, the church proposes that we recall the words of Christ. I am the resurrection in life. He who believes in me, even if he die, shall live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Side of St. Matthew's Cathedral, the casket bearing the body of the late president now emerges into the sunshine. holy water over the coffin and kissing the flag. Just behind the coffin now comes the immediate family. Mrs. Kennedy, John Jr. and Caroline. the souls of the faithful find rest. Be pleased to bless this grave. Send thy holy angel to keep it and loose from 
the body we bury here in, and of our beloved Jack Kennedy, 85th President of the United States, and that his soul may rejoice in thee with all the saints, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, because he hath visited and wrought the redemption of his people, and hath raised up a horn of salvation to us in the house of David his servant, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets who are from the beginning. Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. To show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath which he swore to Abraham, our father, that he would grant unto us. That being delivered from the hand of our enemies, we may serve him without fear. In holiness and justice also before him all our days. And now, child, shalt be called the prophet of the Most High, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people unto the remission of their sins. Through the vows of the mercy of God, in which the day spring from on high hath visited us, to enlighten them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to direct our feet into the way of peace. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believeth in me, although he be dead, shall live. And everyone who liveth and believeth in me shall not die forever. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we pray our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. From the gates of hell, deliver his soul, O Lord, that he may rest in peace. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come unto thee. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. And, O Lord, this mercy to thy servant departed. And he who in his desires did thy will may not receive the punishment of any misdeeds, and that as true faith that join them to the company of the faithful here below, thy mercy may make him the companion of the holy angels in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Requiem aeternum donae domine lux perpetua lucia ei. Ei rest in peace, eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.
in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord be uh, with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. O God, by whose word all things are made holy, pour down thy blessing on this light which thou hast created and grant that whoever giving thanks to thee uses it in accordance with thy law and thy will, may by calling upon thy holy name receive to thy aid, help the body and protection of soul and grace to follow in the way of the wonderful man whom we bury here today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen.